Let's look at making a health property for our character. So inside of our hierarchy, we're going to go down here to the scripts folder. In our assets folder, remember we have a scripts folder here. Inside of the scripts folder, we have our player controller. That's where we're going to have our health added to our character since the player controller is connected to the player. If I click on the player, I'll see the player controller over here and I can either enter the code by double clicking here or double clicking it here and opening up Visual Studio or Mono Develop, whichever editor you're using. Once this happens, what we want to be able to do is make a static variable that's going to allow us to have a health bar or health information that's persistent throughout all the classes. That means if I have another instance of the player, the health will be the same. So inside of my player controller, I'm going to go probably right before this awake function. And I'm going to go ahead and add myself a static uh, health. And I'm going to call it a private, so that way it's not accessible, but I'm going to give it a static property. Float. So this is, this is actually a static property that we're creating that will persist throughout all the, the entire uh, program and all the scenes. So I'm going to call this health in lowercase. Lowercase because um, technically whenever you name something private, the, pair, the, you know, the structure that I use is that I have it lowercase. Normally when it is public, I put it uppercase. Now I haven't been completely following that all the way through, but normally that's how I do it. So I leave this like this. Now, if you want some people, some programmers put an underscore here to indicate that it's private, but I really haven't been doing that this whole time. I have no underscores. You know, I'll do it now just for educational purposes, but you need something that's consistent throughout. When the privates who uh, have lowercase, everyone knows that if the variable or property starts with lowercase, it's going to be private, and if it's uppercase, it's going to be public. But for right now, since we haven't been 100% following that, I can go ahead and put this underscore here. I'm going to call this health, and that's going to equal 100. And then I'm going to create a public property that accesses that health. And it's going to be a float. And it's going to be called health. And I'm going to just make that uppercase health. Now, this property has a getter, and this property has a setter. Now, this right here allows it to automatically get and set properties. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and put open and close brackets in place of the semicolon. Then I'm going to call this a static. So inside of this get, the reason why it's red because it requires a return property. So I'm going to return the health. So now in the set, I am going to go ahead and set the health to value. And the reason why uh, value is cool to use is because it's a keyword that C sharp recognizes. So we didn't have to set it up in here. It's implied that it's inside of this procedure here. And then we want to go ahead and check to see if uh, every time it's being set that if uh, the health is less than or equal to zero, then we want the player to die. And we don't have a die function or procedure yet. So what we want to do is go ahead and create this procedure. So a little trick of this is you see how I, I wrote this die and I don't have a procedure here. If I were to just put my mouse over this inside of Visual Studio, this works. And then go to this little light bulb and click down. I can put generate method. And what it'll do is automatically write that for me here. Now, I don't want this part here, but basically I saved myself a couple of keystrokes. I'm going to take this right here and remove this and put it somewhere down here. Let 
uh, the only thing I want to change about this, I don't want it private. I want it public. And I think that's about it. I, I Now, if you didn't, you know, you can't figure out that little trick thing that I did with Visual Studio. Just go ahead and type this out. Do it the long way. So you just type out public static void die. And we're not really doing anything up in here. We're going to have to set up the death um, properties inside of Unity so that way we can use it inside of here. But so far, we do have it to where when the character's health gets down to zero, die actually works. Um, except nothing happens when you die. Now we're going to go ahead and set that up. So let's go back here to Unity. I shouldn't have that error anymore. All right, so now what we want to do here is go to our project. We're going to go to the scripts folder. We're going to right click here and we're going to go ahead and create ourselves a new script. And this script is going to reload the scene after the character dies. So it's going to be scene reset timer. And then um, double click on the scene reset timer. Open it up in model develop. I want to make sure that the name is the same like we did before. So inside of this code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add myself a timer delay. And then I'm going to want a public integer. It's going to be a scene. It's going to be scene number that we load after the timer. And then in the start, let me remove this. Inside the start, I'm going to want to invoke this, but I want to invoke it after a certain amount of time. And this is in particular to C sharp. I mean, not to C sharp, but to Unity. Not necessarily to C sharp. There's an invoke method that we'll be able to use. But first, let's go ahead and create our load scene procedure. Um, and I'm not really going to be using the update, so. Inside this load scene, I'm going to call upon the application dot load scene, load level, sorry. And then I'm going to give it the scene ID. All right, so now here I can go ahead and invoke the load scene. after the time delay has passed. All right, now that I have this set up, I'm going to go back to Unity. And inside of my, where is it, the um, standard assets, inside the particle system, we have our prefabs, we have our explosion here. And I want to go ahead and add this explosion to the scene. So. I'm going to drag this explosion up here. You should be able to see it up here in front because of the way we set up our layers before. If not, then you have to change the layer that this resides on. But if I were to hit play, you see that explosion happening there. So now that I have that explosion there, I want to select this uh, explosion. And then I'm going to go back to my assets, go to my scripts. And at scene restart timer, I'm going to drag it right on to the explosion. When I select my explosion, you'll see the scene restart uh, script sitting right there. So now we have this here, and it's going to load scene zero. And where am I getting these scene numbers from? Well, if I go to a file, build settings, you'll see here where I have the start scene and I have this scroller game scene. And they're all given these numbers here. So really what's going to happen is it's going to go right back to zero instead of one. So it's going to leave this scene and jump to that second scene. If I wanted this scene to restart, I would just put one there. So 
let's see what happens when I hit play here. And I'm going to change this timer to something like one for now. And there it is. It start back at start. And then I go here and it goes back and forth. So this is an awesome game. You know, I'm, I'm going to charge a couple of million dollars for it. But for right now, you're having tons of fun. You press start, you explode. Press start, you explode. You know, I'm thinking about adding a few more enemies into it. You know, make it a little bit more challenging. But this is as challenging as it can get. Okay, start, explode. Bam. All right, so don't steal my idea. But yours might be a little bit more challenging. Maybe you don't want it to go right back to the start. Maybe you want this scene to start off after the explosion. So then instead of scene zero, I'll just put scene one. And then basically what we're going to get is a scene that constantly starts over and over and over. You're just killing off the character, right? So I know we're having a little bit of fun with this, but basically this thing is just, we, we know it works. That's all we're doing right here. Obviously we're not going to leave that in the scene the whole time. Okay, so now that I have this all set, I'm going to select this explosion. I am going to reset this, everything back to zero. Make sure it's centered. Then I'm going to create a prefabs of this. So I'm going to go to my assets folder. I'm going to go to the prefabs. I'm going to drag this explosion there. So that way I can instantiate this no matter where I am and what scene I'm in. Okay, so once that's done, I don't want this called explosions. I want this called... So now that I have my prefab, uh, I can remove this from the scene. And now we want to go right back to the player, not the reset. We already got that settled. We want to go back to the player controller. Remember, that's in the assets inside of the scripts and player controller right here. At the top here, we're going to add right above this health. I'm just reorganizing this really quick. I'm going to put this above here. So right above this health here, I'm going to go ahead and add a death particles. So with this particle, death particles uh, being exposed, we can go ahead and set the whatever death particle we're going to be using on this. So instead of doing it later, maybe forgetting to do it, we can now go to the player and then we're going to go to our assets and then uh, it's in our prefabs folder. Remember we put it here and we're going to go ahead and drag this onto the player. So I'm going to select the player. I'm going to drag this onto the death particle property of the player. So that way I know that that's the death particle that I'm referring to in code. So now let's go back to model develop, I mean to uh, Visual Studio. And I'm going to go down here. Uh, I got a lot of space here for whatever reason. I'm getting rid of that space. No need to make the code look a little longer than it should, than it really is. So um, right here in the death. I'm going to go ahead and type out everything that I need here and I'm going to pause the video and then you can go ahead and pause the video and type out what I put if that makes any sense. Give me one second. So what we have here now is we have the die function complete. I want you to go ahead and copy that and basically what it's doing is it's checking to see if the par death particle is uh, true or not. Um, and if it isn't, you can go ahead and instantiate the death particle and where you want the death particle is where the player is and you want it rotate it, the rotation and transform where the player is. Then once that's done, you can go ahead and remove and destroy that player instance. Then on the, on the destruction of the player, we're going to go ahead and put player instance to null. So that way we can go ahead and instantiate a new player. If you go up here. I, uh, I, I created a variable here called player instance. I, I don't think I showed you that before, but for right now, it's a public static uh, player controller, player instance equals null. Make sure you put that there. 
before you start uh, typing this part right here. The other thing we want to do is put something in here to where we can kill off the character so we can see this working so we don't have to keep jumping in or anything like that. So inside of the fix update, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, where is this fix update? Right here. I'm going to go ahead and add some hack code up in here to where we're going to check to see if a key was pressed. So I'm going to say input uh, dot get key down. And I'm going to look for the key code of X. So when X is pressed, I want the health. And I'm going to use the public version of health equals zero. Now, why am I using the public version of health? Because we create a property up here, a private property called health. We don't want to use this because this directly um, connects to the variable health. And this is giving you a quick understanding of object-oriented programming. We don't want to give the user direct uh, connection to health because we want health to do some calculations before uh, it goes here. So when we're setting health, we're checking to see if death happens. So this is why we use this uh, public version of health here. So when it's set to zero, all of this should happen. So let's see what happens from here. So I'm going to go over here and I am going to press play. And I'm pressing X, but nothing seems to be happening because I'm assuming we forgot to set some variables. So let me go check my code. And going over here, let's uh, check something here. I have my player. OK. okay. Uh, I never went inside of here and added my player instance to this. So, of course, he's not going to explode because the computer doesn't know what to explode. So, go ahead and add this part, the player instance equals this to the awake function. Uh, and then now let's go try to run it again. Let's try to play this story all over again. So, it's a nice, beautiful day. Trees are in the behind, and there's a really nice, beautiful blood lava pit going on over here that we expect. But then all of a sudden, he gets it some news in the mail that his cable is due and then boom he explodes so by pressing x boom he explodes and he's trying to run away from the explosion but boom he explodes oh no 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 so i'm gonna run it. i'm gonna jump he almost escaped but no all right so you get the idea he can explode by pressing x and we use the x key so that way we can actually test this out immediately I mean, don't go nuts on the explosion. The dude can only regenerate like a million times. It's not like he's Deadpool or anything. So now all we need to do is go ahead down here and add the ability for when he falls, then he explodes as opposed to you pressing D and he explodes. All right. So obviously that's not a very safe game when someone presses a button, they explode. Um, unless it's some sort of code that they're supposed to put in and they put the code in wrong, then they explode. There's a couple of ways you can use it. But I'm going to go ahead and remove um, this test that I have up here for the explosion because obviously I know it works now. Right here. And if, if you like that there, you can go ahead and comment that out. And leave it there just for now. And save your work. And in the next video, we're going to go ahead and make it to where when he falls inside of the lava pit or whatever this stuff is... Um, then he also explodes. All right, I'll see you guys then. Bye.